and greetings, and welcome to the Aimless Adventure Podcast. We have a special guest with us, probably one of our very first special guests from the podcast, Mr. Ray Billings, the owner-operator of Tombstone, the BattleBot. Um, so, Ray, you guys are on BattleBots mm-hmm. again this season. How is How did it go? How's it going? Uh, the event was a blast. We had a really good time. I always have a good time at events, so that's, that's not a big stretch of the imagination there. We had a lot of fun. Um, it was double the format this time than last time. So we had over twice as many robots this time as we did last time. And so we had a lot more, a lot more stuff to keep track of, a lot more action and a lot more matches. Uh, and, and it drug it out a lot longer. We had to be on site for 10 days, which is a long time. Oh, wow. Time. Yeah. It was what, two days the last time or something? Um, last time we had to be there, I want to say it was like five days with, two or three of it actually being the fighting days. Mm-hmm. This time we were there for, you know, a week and a half, and four days of that was actual fighting. Yeah. Um, I got to tell you, you know, this this season on BattleBots, your first battle, I don't even think they really even showed it. They didn't there. Um, which was really disappointing. Uh, they, they seem, you know, last year they kind of seemed to set you up as the villain, but this year they kind of just seemed to set you up as bored? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure... It, they had so many more faces they needed to introduce, and a lot of them didn't stick around very long. They were only there for a match or two, and they were eliminated. Right. So, yeah, you know, we're halfway through the, the season of what we're airing right now, and I've only been in two of the, the episodes, and even there it was briefly because yeah. both of those... Both of those matches were pretty fast. That's, that's so good for you, but bad for us. We've only seen you what you had, like, <laughs> probably a minute and 15 seconds in the box. Uh, yeah, pr- probably that. It's been it's been pretty brief. the The first match was over relatively quickly, and I could see why it, it just went to a highlight reel. It wasn't all that exciting of a yeah. match. Um, the second one, at least, was shown in its entirety, but it was again, it was a really fast match. They they were over fairly quickly. I, you know, I I can't tell you how it goes from this point forward. <laughs> right. I know you'll, right, you'll, right. You'll, you'll get to see a lot more of me from this point forward. Let's just put it that way. My, my take is um, you just seem a lot more, I want to say, focused this year. Like, Fun- not, not that winning last year wasn't important, but it really looks to me like you're there to win, take your bot, fix it, and be ready for the next match. And honestly, that is probably how my, my, my you know frame of mind was throughout this event. And, and you know, don't get me wrong, it's, I want to make it sound like last season there, there weren't serious bots there, because there were. But there weren't that many really big kinetic energy robots last year. And so the big hits and the big matches and the, the big spraying parts all over the place in the arena, I, I was kind of carrying the load for the show. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you were. Yeah. And and so, you know, I, I'm going to do whatever it takes for the, the show to be renewed. So, you know, I'm going to put on the best show that I can. But at the same point in time, I'm still a competitor. I want to win. Right. When they when they drug the format out this time, and now there's there's another round to, to go through to get to the finals, that's always the enemy of a robot like mine. I I'm the guy that tears my own self up. That's what happens. So I was a little more reserved. Isn't the right word, but I mean, I, I didn't go out of my way to really endanger the robot any more than I had to to win and move forward because I knew I had a long road ahead of me to get to the finals. What's what's the attitude of, of some of the other bot builders that are on the floor? I mean, you know, in the last episode, we got to see, was that the NASA former NASA team that you beat? Uh, let's see. The, my first match was a, a NASA astronaut. The last guys that I fought were uh, part of the SpaceX program. You know, yeah. They're like the rocket on the, 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 the barge in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, they, uh, seem, they seem really good humored about uh, going up against you. They yeah. seem like they kind of knew. They're like, well... <laughs> This is it, you know, it was kind of like the captain standing at the bow of the ship as it sinks, but they seem to be having a good time with it. Now, are there other bots out there? I, you know, you see some of these bots that are built with, like, plastic shells and stuff, and you wonder, like, do they feel like they can go all the way, that they can actually beat Tombstone, or...? You know, I, and in that regard, I think a lot of people are hoping that some of the big kinetic energy robots will take each other out. So they don't, they don't want to fight me. They don't want to fight, say, Ice Wave or Minotaur, some of the other bigger hitters, right? So they'll just assume that we're going to beat the crap out of each other, and they can sort of just wander their way through the, through the event. So they're kind of they're hoping they can get to the end of it with uh, maybe make it to the finals and not lose until the last day against the big bot. And... 
Yeah, you know, in, in in some events that really does work that way. A lot of times, the 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 big kinetic energy robots they they can win matches, but it's harder to win <laughs> tournaments because it, as it grinds on, the the amit the damage adds up. Right. And um, so I don't know. Some some of them can convince themselves in their head that yes, they can take on mighty tombstone and. Most of the ones that convince themselves that way can't, but you know that's that's part of the fun of the show too. Yeah, I, you know, the, like the girl that ran that ladybug bot with, that had like the upside down like plastic pool on it. Yeah, she redesigned yeah. that. Yeah. That was a really good 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 idea on her uh, part. I, I think it was a good idea, but I think she was a little too confident in like her bot's abilities because they, they. Well, and uh, okay, some to some degree, you you should be confident about the robot you're showing up with. You better think you're going to win some matches, or you you really shouldn't be there. Right. And, and you know, there's there is some engineering skill there. She's got the, the drivetrain's fairly stout. She does have a weapon attached to it. So, in the her first match, the idea was usually to cover him up with that that sandbox. And then there's a drum inside there, and you can hear it chewing away on the other robot, but you can't really see it. And so some of it is try to convince the judges something is happening that's out of your view. You can't see her chewing it up. <laughs> and and that, that didn't play well to her in her first match. But in her second match, they turned it around and they put the drum on the out, outside part. And it did much better that way. I mean, she was actually able to dish out some damage. And right. It, and it seemed like um, having the shell there without the weapon in it acted as a surprisingly well uh, shock absorber. I, I would agree. Every time Matt would push her into the, the wall, that sh big shell would just collapse, and it's kind of like a big spring. It wouldn't. It keep the rest of the robot from being damaged. Right. Yeah, the first thing I thought of when I saw that, as a matter of fact, is you see the trucks that follow construction crews that just have the big old crumple zone on the mm -hmm. back. That's exactly what it reminded me of. Yeah, yeah. I, and you know, it's it's you, you have your two hundred and fifty pounds, and you get to do with it what you want. So that's her vision of how she wants to do it. And against certain opponents, it's going to be effective. Against some others, it's not. But that's right. that's the nature of the of the event. That's how it works. So, okay, you're talking about um, the high impact kinetic energy, uh, powerful destructive bots, and how they seem to be getting more plentiful and stronger. I used to watch Battle Bots when it was on Comedy Central 15 years ago or whatever, and <laughs> it got to the point to where, like in season seven or something, it was pretty much which wedge bot was wedgier. Is that something yes. that this BattleBots is trying to stay away from because it made for lame television? Correct, correct. And so um, part of the part of the rules for being uh, for submitting a bot to even be considered to be on the show is you have to have an active powered weapon. You okay. have, it's required. Um, and so last season, what they found is there were some robots that they had an active powered weapon. They just didn't use it. They, they, they would bolt on a big wedge plate, and they'd have a lifter or a grabber or something. So they met the, the, the letter of the rules, but didn't really meet the spirit of the rules. So they, they had a weapon, but instead they just used their wedge to drive around. And so they changed the judging guidelines this year to mandate the use of your powered weapon. So you could only get aggression points by using your powered weapon to be act aggressive. If you had a wedge and you use that as your weapon and you're pushing into somebody, you actually lost aggression points. <laughs> nice. And so, and so there's been there's been a, some people in the community have griped over the way some of the judges' decisions have gone because of this. And to some degree, I agree with some of their complaints. If you have to explain the judges' decisions to the audience, it was probably a bad decision. <laughs> people watch the show. They should be able to watch the match, and when they're done, clearly pick who won. Even if they don't know the judges' criteria, it's usually pretty obvious which robot was in charge of what was going on in the match. Yeah, and if you're if you're I, shocked by the winner, they've probably failed. Is is that something I, that they they addressed um, not at the very beginning? Because it seems like the last couple episodes, <laughs> the commentators are actively saying. Well, he needs to do more damage with his main weapon, like letting it be known that the main weapon is a determining factor. I and I don't know if I, I mean I know at times they'll they'll take the episodes that they've got. They're still in the process of editing all the shows that haven't been aired, mm -hmm. and and it could be that they're taking some of these complaints that they see online because they follow all that stuff intensely, and it could be that they're taking that and they're going, okay, well let's. Let's do a voiceover again on this match. Bring those guys in and try to, you know, 
clean things up a bit so people understand what's going on. I, I, I don't know that they're doing that. I'm not involved sense. in that end of it. But it, it wouldn't surprise me if they're doing that to try to make it more clear what's going on. So what kind of changes have you made to your bot this year? Uh, mostly the, the changes to Tombstone were related about reliability in general. Um, <laughs> most of the weapon bar systems were the same as what I used before, using the same type of drive motors and weapon motor and whatnot. Um, the biggest change I would say I made from this year over last year was I added some uh, shock compliance mounts to the drive system so that, the, that they can actually move in the frame somewhat. They're, they're rubber mounted off there. And it seemed to really help the dependability of the drive system. I did not lose a single drive motor throughout the tournament, which is unusual. Oh, wow. Nice. Very cool. Um, you're, speaking of your design, most people probably don't know that there's a mini tombstone called Last Rites, correct? <laughs> that well, was the original, wasn't it? Uh, mini, in this case, is 30 pounds lighter, so it's still a very <laughs> <laughs> large it's robot. Little, little brother. It, it, mini! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, is there any actually, chance that maybe next yeah, season but, we'll see Justin roll that out there and see a Tombstone Last <laughs> Rites final? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. We, we've talked about, because they like to see things that are new and fresh for every season. And so the, the, the guy who was running it was kind of saying, you know, I maybe you might think of something other than a horizontal bar spinner that you've been making forever. Yeah, I'm thinking about so, winning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it does work, and it puts on a show, I, I, I've been considering, and I, I don't even know if I'm going to do this, I'm probably just talking off the top of my head here, but I, I, I might actually turn Tombstone over to my son next year and build another robot Ooh. To, 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 to dive back in. So Ooh. it's it's a it's a thought that's been on my head. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but it, it would be kind of cool then at that point in time to see how well he handles the handles the big guy. So it'd, it'd be father against son like that team of uh, Waiachi, yeah? Waiachi's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and it, it would be similar. I mean, the Waiachi's build really good robots. They really do. And, you know, they got the wrong opponents at the wrong time this time to, to move forward. Hell, upset of the show, man. Yeah. 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 Uh, watching son of Waiachi run was impressive. It, it was really dishing out some hits. And... You know, I was already, as soon as I saw them, they were on the other side of the bracket, and I'm thinking, okay, well, if we fight, it, it's because we made it all the way to the finals, and that would be a good one. I, I think that would have been a really cool fight. You know, I well, I, I honestly, I, d I don't know how it would have gone. So if you can say that, it would have been a good one. Yeah. Well, being, besides that, is there any other bot that, if you had your druthers, you wouldn't meet or have met in the arena? Um, well, you know, the thing is, I'm ready to fight any of them, so it doesn't matter which one they stick against me. I'm, I'm absolutely looking forward to every match they give me. But there's some that I would like to, I would prefer to see a little later in the event. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Son of Waiachi would have fell into that category. Um, Minotaur w would be another one. Uh, the Brazilians build really tough machines, and, and we have a fight history. We fought a lot away from BattleBots. And they're always a, just a knockdown, drag out fight. It's it's more a matter of who is still limping at the <laughs> yeah. end of the match. And, and, and I honestly think we're about 50 50 over the long haul. We, wow. we, we've wow. won about as many as we've lost from them. Does that so, thing sound as menacing in person as it sounds on TV? It's 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 pretty unnerving. Yeah. <laughs> um, the thing is, if they run it at full speed, they break their own parts in the process. Wow. And so so typically during a match, they run at about half throttle. So it's about half of its total RPM. That's crazy. And, and the cool thing is they, they got kind of that wonderful gyro dance they can do at the end of the match. And if you listen, they'll ramp that thing up quite a bit at the end when they're not going to hit anybody anymore. Right. And then they can do these weird gyro dances and stuff from all the effect. It's, it's got an insane amount of energy. It really does. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, do you? Can you tell us? Do you fight Minotaur in this? Uh... Uh, they're on the other side of the tournament. Oh, so uh, he can't the say. other side of the bracket. So the only way that I would fight them would be if it was in the final. So obviously, I can't tell you how far that goes down okay. there. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, you know, uh, we both did fairly well in this event, but that's about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Say, say Tombstone didn't exist. But you we're still passionate about battle bots and fighting robots, and you're watching this season. Okay. Who would you be rooting for? What what bot would you be like? That is awesome. That that's my bot. Um, you know, 
it's it's hard to answer that from an outside watching the show opinion because I know all the guys there. Right. So, just from from a personal opinion, there's some really good ones that I'd like to see do really well. Um, the guy who built Yeti hasn't been at a robot event in quite a while. He used to be very mm-hmm. dominant a long time ago, and then he just sort of life took him in different directions. He went off and did other things. And I really like the guy. He's named Greg Gibson. He's a really good guy. And it was great to see him back, and he didn't lose a step. He came back, and the robot was very active and worked really well. So I, I was enjoying seeing him do well at, at the event. Um, another one that kind of falls in that category is Poison Arrow. Um, those guys have done a lot of robots. They just haven't done any quite that large. And it was really cool to see them moving forward. And, and again, the robot's a, a handful. It's got a lot of power. That's the one that beat Sun Wayachi. Yeah, yeah. He was he was a really neat kid to watch on TV because before that match, he was like, he it, it was kind of the same as your second match. He was kind of like, oh, man, I'm going up against Son of Wayachi. I don't think that this is going to go well for me, but if it does, it'll be great. <laughs> I like how he's like, I'm just, I'm just going to go full force, hit him hard, hit him straight, and let's see what happens. And it worked. Yeah, he tossed the dice and it worked, but he just seemed really humble and really just kind of honored to be there and... Kind of a for, just kind of a neat kid to watch on on on, uh, on the TV, I think. For the cage type spinners like Wayachi, there is no other way to do it. The, the the weapon is spinning completely around the outside of the robot, so there's no amount of you know a lot of people for my fighting me, they'll try to get to the side, they'll try to get behind me, they'll try to outdrive me, which is very difficult to swing around past me. There's nothing like that with Wayachi. You have to take it. Whatever he's dishing out, you have to take it. So all you can do is just try to take it the way you want rather than the way he wants. And I, they played it perfectly. Spun up, just go straight into him and see who breaks first. You know? what, what do you think of some of the gimmicks and stuff? Like, I, I sort of feel like the inclusion of drones this year is kind of a gimmick. How, how do you feel about that? Complete gimmick. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of, of the drones. I can see why it would play well for for on video. Uh, uh, the the match with Warrior Clan and Hypershock, mm-hmm. where he had the rank and he swatted it out of the air. So it was far, awesome. it, yeah, was cool. it was awesome. It was very cool. It was awesome. But if he ignored that thing up there and just let it flame away all day long, it's not like it would have hurt anything. Um, th- th- somebody had asked me about the fire drones at one point in time. Aren't you afraid of the fire? Right. When I get my, my wheels, they have sort of an oily substance on the outside from when they pull them out of the mold when they make them. I clean them with a torch. I set them on fire on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, the says, aren't you worried about the fire robots? I could park my robot in the arena. I could go to the bathroom, go grab a beer. I could go do whatever. <laughs> I, there's nothing they could do to hurt me. They can't do it. That's so, awesome. It, it, they're completely ineffective. Do they look good on TV? I I don't know. Do you guys think they look good on TV? If if so, I guess we'll keep them. But I mean, honestly, it, it looked really good when they swatted that one out of the air. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Other than watching one get raked out of the sky, I could totally. I think there's been a couple of points where they actually kind of got in the way of watching the action, and it was more of like the guy sticking his big head in front of you in the movie theater than it was action. So <laughs> I could do without them. I was a lot happier with the idea of drones yeah. when I heard about it than actually seeing it in the yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was talking to these guys. I was like, what if you just had a drone that had like a flasher or something and you got in front of the driver of the other robot and just hovered there and flashed him, strobe lighted his eyes. <laughs> you know, and and that, that is not supposed to be something. You're not supposed to obscure the other driver's vision. Um, and the thing that most people, even a lot of competitors don't understand is you're not, you're not glued to the floor when you're up there. So if they were in front of my face flashing, I'd walk over to the other driver's stand and stand next to him. And <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to blind somebody. You're going to blind us both. I'm, you know. Right. So you can, you, you can move around if you need to. Yeah. Gotcha. We were talking about drones the other day, um, the security aspect of it. Oh, yes. Um, one of my questions was that I was curious about is when it comes to – the, the drones is what made me think of it specifically, but um, like the safety testing, if there is any, as to what's okay to bring into the arena. I know, like we see the ones with like the sharp edged weapons, we'll have them covered until they get inside the box and stuff like that. But what about like the the weapons, the the flaming bots and the the drones with gas, that kind of stuff? 
do they have to go through any kind of testing process or anything to make sure they're safe to bring through the crowd to get them to the box? It's it's pretty extensive. In fact, um, to allow fire-based weapons, the fire marshal of wherever you're at has to come approved. Oh, so, wow. Um, the fire marshal's involved in all events anyway because they're the one that decide how many people can go in a building. Right. So you, you already have the fire marshal as part of every event. And so the fire marshal will come out, and they will have either that guy or one of his top guys will be there, and they go through all of the flame-based robots, and they actually made them all test them and display their flames that they had complete control with them and whatnot. Um, but they stayed on top of it fairly, fairly tightly in that regard. Huh. That was the um, what the other thing that I was curious about too is the same, kind of along the same lines is um. When it comes to uh, the actual ratings, like before every match, they show you the ratings of the bots. <laughs> yeah, I was okay. curious: is that come out of like totally out of left field, or is that based on like qualifying matches, or any idea where that comes from, or how they come up with those ratings? Um, you know, at at the bottom line from that is there's somebody out there that's just throwing some numbers out as a guess. That's okay. <laughs> so but, and yeah, and. Were they guessing well in some spots? I, I thought they were. In others, I would say they were way off base. But it's just, you know, uh, it's just somebody's opinion based upon either how the robot looks or how it's driven before. Um, and, I, and I could even say that would be the same for some of the, the seedings, how, you know, they seed them from 1 through oh, right. one through 32. I, it's still, it's essentially still just a guess. And like in my case, where I got seated number one both years, well, my qualifying match this year was really not that exciting. I I wouldn't have expected to be the number one seed again, but they did it based upon the fact that how well it worked in the matches they'd seen before. It's it's just somebody's opinion, and <laughs> opinions you know how they are. They're good. <laughs> what, what, everybody's got everybody's got them. Doesn't make them right. Yeah, know? definitely. What about um kind of kind of going back to. Uh, <clears throat> kind of the excitement level. I mean, it's it's obviously for the fans, and you know, if you don't have the fans, you don't have the the whole show. But do they ever come up to any of the competitors and basically like, hey, look, the last match you were kind of a little bit lame. You need to step it up a bit next time. You need to put on a better show, kind of thing. Do they ever kind of basically coach you to uh, be more entertaining? There, there are. There are limits to what they can do there. It is a contest. There is cash money as a prize. So there are a lot of rules about what they can and can't do with you as a contestant in this competition for money. Right. So they can't up and give you any input whatsoever about how you fight your fight. They can't do it. They're legally precluded from doing that. At the same point in time, they can help you as far as how things look on camera. Okay, um, uh, given an example, um, in one match I got excited to raise my hands up over my head. Uh, a guy comes up and he says, "You know, when you raise your hands up over your head, you show about that much belly at the bottom. And you're <laughs> not a skinny guy, so don't raise your hands quite so high." And I, I got it's you. Like, Just that has nothing. To do with the, <laughs> that has nothing to do with the event. That all that has to do is portraying me better on camera. I, unless you're blinding your competitors. I mean. Right. I, when, well, yeah, it's just, you know, so, so yeah, I'm admitting that I was flashing my fat belly on, you know, on the camera. Um, so, you know, it's, they can give you pointers that don't have anything to do with the competition, but they can't, you know, they can't give you any input whatsoever on how you're actually fighting your fight. Right. So there seems to be more promotion and more, like, merchandising and stuff this year. Is that something that's optional for you guys, or... Um, well, okay, so merchandising has always been an idea for how this works. You know, the, the, it, it, it's always that way for any of show like this, where they, they, they want to sell shirts, they want to sell toys, they want to sell stuff. Right. So a lot of those wheels were in motion last year and didn't start really doing anything until we were for sure renewed for another season. So there was no reason for these people to really move forward with all of this stuff if they weren't renewed. And similar to season one, for season two, we didn't have a contract and we didn't actually know for sure we were showing up to fight until about five, six weeks before we were supposed to be there. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, it's it's the nature of, you know, TV folks, they, they do wonderful things with TV. They're, they're very sharp at what they do. 
and they have no clue what it takes to build a combat robot, which I suppose is realistic on their part. There's no reason they should. You can't build a really good robot in five or six weeks. It right. just doesn't work that way. So the only ones that did really good were the ones like me that started months in advance and were able to, you know, just gamble on the idea that it was going to happen and be ready to go. The same thing is going on with all the merchandising you wanted. All of that stuff was sort of moving forward, but they didn't really start until they actually had a contract and they knew that the event was going to happen. So now you can look on there and you can see most of the teams have T-shirts for sale on the BattleBots website. Mm -hmm. um, and here recently we finally got the actual production units for the, the little toys that they're making, which are friggin' awesome. They're so cool, um, which should be starting for sale, I think, sometime in September. That's cool. Very cool. Yeah, I plan on buying a Tombstone and buying, yeah, no uh, buying a Witch Doctor. Now, the real merchandising opportunity would be Tombstone, you know, crossbred with a Roomba for home security. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call it the ankle biter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it'd be a great security robot. You know, you wake up in the morning and you got four feet in the garage. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, who's the rest of them? All I got is feet. You know? uh, as, and yeah. lots of big holes in your walls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just drywall, just <laughs> cut out all the way on the bottom. As odd as this might be, I have something to go off of that. Okay. <laughs> hey, Ray, have you ever seen the uh, show Deadliest Warrior? Where they put like ninjas versus vampires or whatever, and no, uh, no, okay. I haven't. So like ninjas versus the guys who play vampire in the masquerade. Yeah, sure. Okay. But they take the weaponry from each era and have somebody very skilled in using those weapons demonstrate the weapons damage on a ballistics gel torso with rib cage and organs and everything. Sure, sure, sure. Have you ever thought about doing something like that? Just so you know, a worst case scenario. You would think that Adam Savage would have approached him, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, um, well, kid, uh, years back there was a uh, one of the CSI shows they did where they had uh, somebody that was supposedly killed by a, a combat robot. So it was one one episode that they did, and so in showing their their forensic study on this. They used a combat robot to cut up. It was a pig carcass, okay? <laughs> and it was actually it was it was really funny talking to the guy afterwards. He says, "I was digging pig out of that robot for months afterwards. I could <laughs> never get the thing to stop. <laughs> I keep finding little pieces." Every time you start it, you're like, "That's no bacon." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so, horrible. Um, the idea has been thought of. I, I I don't know how well it would play out, but the. The idea of digging ballistic gel out of the inside of my robot for a couple of months doesn't sound <laughs> it does, Yeah, it sounds like a pain. But. Probably doesn't smell as bad as rotting pig carcass, though. <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be as bad as rotting pig. That's, that's true. Everybody likes bacon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it had a certain level of freshness, though. <laughs> Before rot. I think. Yeah. Rotting is probably that line you I, don't want to cross. Don't, don't. Don't, you know, harsh somebody's culture because you don't like <laughs> rotting meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. What else is it? I had something else, but... What was that? I don't remember. Well, um, so I'm, I'm curious. Do you have anything outside of BattleBots that's big coming up that we can watch out for? Uh, yeah, yeah I'm going to be on the Aimless Adventures podcast. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that, that is pretty big. Um... Yeah, I, I, not really right now. Um, there was somebody else that hit me up for some sort of podcast appearance, which I have not replied to. So there's there's some other stuff still sort of engaged with the the combat robots. Um, <laughs> this has kept me busy enough as it is. It's, yeah, no it's, it's it's insane how busy this has kept me lately. Um, I think last time we talked to you, you said you bought a PC game but hadn't had time to get into it. Did you ever get around to? Uh, yeah, let's see. So I I, uh, I played through all of was a Far Cry Four at the time. Nice. I got that. I got Fallout, the new Fallout, which I played. I don't know about halfway through, and then I got busy building, and so I haven't got back to it yet at this point in time. Ironically, they've got a machine building expansion now for that yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, I knew I'd get around to it eventually, so I bought them all when they came out, and I just haven't haven't played through it yet that much. So. Kind of funny. He picks time-consuming games to yeah. try and play. <laughs> right, to try. a little bit of time that he has to play. Yeah, but still, like that Fantabulous Machines expansion or something. Like yeah. it'd be cool. He builds like Tombstone in it. That would be cool. That would be kind of dope. 
Yeah, yeah. That, that would be cool. I mean, they have done some combat based PC games and, and like, you know, PlayStation games and whatnot. So that would be really cool if we get down the road where, you know, I, I can drive Tombstone on a video game would be, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. For that. That, would, that, that would be awesome, you know. Well, that would be kind of neat. When, like it, uh, when it comes to uh, qualifying for the actual show, uh, the, you know, applying to be on it, basically, do you get any kind of break as, as a returning as returning for season two from season one, or do you have to go through the exact same applying process that any of the new bots would go through? Um, I have to go through the exact same process, but essentially it still boils down to uh, part of their, one of their biggest concerns is that if you submit plans for a robot, that you actually have the skill and resources to build what you said you will build and show up with a robot that works. Oh, so you actually you actually submit the plans before the robot exists then when you're applying for the show. Well that that's the game plan because they, they, they don't wanna they don't want you to build a robot and then not get picked and then sue them for all your money and whatnot <laughs> I going out, you. right? Because everything to deal with the entertainment industry is always about who's gonna sue who. So right. they, they always try to cover their butt. Right. So if you built a robot and competed before and the robot worked when you showed up you're you're miles ahead on that process of getting picked as a yes for the next season. Um, obviously, they also know which robots were really popular because they keep track of everything. Right. All the uh, everything that gets clicked on the websites and the YouTube channels and all the rest of that. They keep track of every little piece of metadata they can get, and so they already know which robots the people that watch the show like. And so those were always going to be slam dunks as well. So. So me and uh, you know Bronco and Witch Doctor and you know I mean those robots were gonna you know, all they had to do was raise their hand and say yes I want to come compete again <laughs> and they're gonna be back because they've got they've got all the check marks they can build a robot that works they're competitive they look okay on camera and the people like them so I mean you know at that point in time they've got it they got all the check boxes and they're gonna come back then there's some bots at the bottom end of that that would probably have to be a little more proactive in getting themselves back. They're going to so, have to step up their game a little in the off-season. They're, they're going to have to. If they showed up with a robot that didn't work, uh, then they're going to have to really prove that that was just a fluke and that really they know what they're doing and they can come back and show, we'll show up with the robot. So there were some teams this time around that really had some problems, and it wouldn't surprise me if they tried next time and they just get told no thank you. Oh, wow. So... Uh, yeah, you know, a big hunk of it is your past history and how well you can show up with a robot that will do something. Unless they didn't work in a really spectacular way, maybe that would get them back. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose that's part of it. But, you know, they, 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 want, they want robots that, that work and put on a show. They want teams that aren't afraid to have a camera shoved in their face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and those two things are much harder than you might think they're, they are. I mean... You know, there's a there's a lengthy bit of, of safety review and protocols and rules that you have to comply with, and showing up with a robot that meets all of those things and actually works is isn't easy. There's a lot of people that falter there, and then the ones that can do that, it's it's so sad to watch a camera get shoved in their face and they just they kind of blew up like you know, and it's it's like just talk. It's it's you don't, you don't need to know who's on the other end of that camera and do your thing. You know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, I, speaking of the safety side of it. I um, was it the first episode? I think it was when um, when uh, the cage took a, the box took a crack right yeah. in front of the announcers. I, w I was curious if they were going to end up stepping it up from that. They probably didn't expect that to happen. Um, you know, if I'm not scaring people on outside of the arena, I'm probably not doing my job inside. <laughs> That's true. All right. Scaring me, and I'm watching it on TV. Yeah, I'm <laughs> So, so that's part of the visceral thrill of being at these events is, yeah, okay, so I can yank right, a tire yeah. off of somebody and I can sling it at the Lexan right in front of you. And you're going to flinch even though there's no way it can come out. Right. If, if you don't feel like you need to flinch, then the robots aren't that exciting, okay? There's nobody that going to get out of this arena. That arena is a beast. I think it's about 150,000 pounds of steel in Lexan. Jeez. Um, it, it, it's, it's 
probably the weakest spot on it would be maybe the floor. And even if you manage to cut your way out there, you're just coming down into the all the equipment that's under the floor. Yeah, you're not going to hurt anybody. There's, there's, there's no way that I, they really take safety seriously at pretty much any events that I go to. So, you know, I'll, I'll yank off big pieces of metal and sling it at the, at the Lexan. And, of course, they're going to react because, well, especially the announcers, they're not really necessarily used to this sort of... <laughs> Sort of thing. Yeah. That's they, not an elbow. They must have a pretty good like yeah. exhaust system on the arena too, right? I mean, like, Witch Doctor's oh, lithium true. ion battery started to burn up, and that must have been a toxic cloud of smoke. Yeah, lithium polymer fires are nasty. They really are. Um, and yeah, they they had uh, they had some air scrubbers that they would just basically wheel in, and they would suck the air in and filter it and blow it back out. And they, they actually worked very well. They, they could they could scrub it clean in, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and it was completely clear in there. So, well, I need one of those for the garage and close yeah, the garage and have cigars. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh. Yeah, you know, it was a lot safer to do it that way than it would be to try to vent that toxic stuff outside. So, and, oh, Andrew in California. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Delay things too much either. So it was yeah, it's probably like a death penalty offense in California. <laughs> <laughs> they just string you up and flay yeah. you. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I guess, I mean, realistically, if they made it through the floor any of the equipment, that wouldn't hurt anything at all because it would make for really good television, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah and, and even even something, I mean, I can make a big hole in the floor, but actually cutting your way out, even even a robot like mine couldn't do that. I mean, mm. you just peel... It's it's a couple of layers of steel, so even if you got one and peeled it up, there's more underneath it. To, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you wouldn't be exiting the arena. There, there, there'd be no way. So as long as there's a BattleBots on ABC, are you going to continue doing it? You seem to really enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I have a real good time with it. Um, as long as I can continue to, to compete, I will. Um, you know, it's uh, I think it's really important. I think it's a wonderful way to get kids excited about engineering. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, I, I do all kinds of stuff with <laughs> Cub Scout meetings, elementary schools, whatnot. Anybody that calls me, if it's educational related, I'll show up. And um, it's, it's amazing how smart kids are everywhere. It doesn't matter where you're going. They will always surprise you with how sharp they are if you can get them motivated. And this is one of those things that just connects with kids. They're always motivated about it. You show up. And kids come in and they immediately start redesigning your robot. Why don't you put an axe on the back? Yeah. <laughs> Shoot out the side and put some armor around the tires and everything. That's and, great. You know, we, we can joke about it, but the reality is that's what engineering is. Yeah. That's how engineering works. What if you did this? What if you did that? And if you can get them excited about this, it's amazing the stuff they'll come up with. So, um, yeah, I, I, I obviously feel some passion about it and I'll continue to do it, but it's not just because I enjoy it. I think there's some important things about it that I do that, that oh, are absolutely. really helpful in general. Definitely. Well, I'm well, sure it's sure. no small coincidence, but not not too long after BattleBots became real mainstream, our high school in our local very small town ended up with a engineering and robotics team. They go out and compete now and stuff. So, I mean, I think that's awesome, and it seems to have a pretty big following, too. You know what's crazy is that when I was in school, we had those things. It was like Odyssey of the Mind and stuff like that, where, like, you would build Yeah, but a lot of that stuff has went away everything. in recent past. You know, even yeah. band, and band yeah. is almost, I mean, music classes have, have been non-existent right. and stuff, and it's starting to come back. But but we've never had engineering and robotics yeah. in this town, and, and now we do. And it's, yeah. I mean, what, yeah. we're in the second year now, right? Yeah. Of, and, and it, like I said, it's just it's a great way for kids to connect with it. And it, it, I've heard one guy use this term, and I really like it. It's stealth learning. They there have no idea how many skills they're picking up. They're just <laughs> doing it because they want to be part of it. And I, I, I learn new stuff every time I go. Every single event I go to, I learn something new that, that I need to apply further down the road. And it's lifelong. As long as you keep doing this, you'll keep learning new stuff. And so it's great to get kids involved. It's just I, I love doing that. It's 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 part of the motivation for me to be part of it. Oh, absolutely, that's, that's really cool. awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, speaking of how will you continue doing this as long as ABC keeps airing it? Have you heard any trickling down of good news, bad news on ratings or following or merchandising or anything? Is it looking good? I, you know? I, I've heard news, uh, probably good and bad. Um, the ratings this time aren't as high as they were last time. Really? So we have, we're on a different time slot, which I 
I don't think helped us. I think that mm. where we were before it was probably better. Um, and other things have got in the way of those ratings. Uh, we've got all of the political stuff that's going on. So we we had one show completely knocked out. The whole schedule shifted out a week for one political speech. Mm -hmm. Then we had both the Republican and National Conventions, which delayed the show on the West Coast by almost an hour. Yeah, it did. And then, like, <laughs> you know, so, so we, we, have, we have a show tomorrow night. So it's on tomorrow night. And then we have, it, it won't be on again for another three weeks after that because they don't want to put it up against the Olympics. Now, I understand that. that that's, a, that's a good call to not have it on. But at the same point in time, all of this dicing and cutting cutting of the, the audience to watch the show, it's understandable that you have less people watching than you did before. It, right. it, it, just, it just makes sense. Especially when you look at it, like compare it to NFL football, because there's 32 teams in football. It right. would be difficult to, in one season, especially with the time differences, breakups, et cetera, et cetera, trying to make a connection with a team to call your own. And Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there are there are some good news out of this. The ratings for this year are better than what ABC had in the slot the year before. So there is at least a, a case to be made that, yes, this is better than what we had. We should continue it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a much better show this year. You know, I've always wondered, and, I, and you probably don't know, but I've always wondered how they factor in things like Hulu watch rates. Because uh, personally, I watch on Hulu because it means that I can watch it any time that I'm ready to watch it. Uh, yeah. Because I, you know, my my schedule is all over the place. Um, they, you know, they, they factor that in. How much they factor it in, I don't, I don't know. But I know they do include, they include uh, they, even DVR viewership as long as you watch it fast enough. Hmm, so if okay. you watch it within three days after it's aired, th that helps some of those ratings numbers. If you watch it six weeks later, they don't care anymore. Unless so, you hit play and it's the political stuff and no fighting robots yeah. and you just sit yeah. there and pout for a little while <laughs> yeah. um, another good point is that they recently signed some contracts for overseas distribution oh wow so it's so they're gonna they're gonna be able to show it in europe they're gonna be able to show it in asia there's a lot of different big markets that they sold the rights to and these contracts were multi-year so as long as they decide to do it again next year, they already have the stuff sold for money. So it's a lot easier to renew a show if you know you already have X million coming in if you do it. Very so cool. So I, I, I don't know the details of the money aspects of those contracts, but I know that that should help with the decision to renew it for next year if they already know they have at least some income coming in for it. Oh, yeah, we, I'd, I'd watch it twice. I'd watch it again on Crunchyroll if they put, like, Japanese yeah. announcers on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty entertaining. Um, I'm sure with everything being digital and stuff now, if you have your cable box or your DirecTV box or whatever set to that channel at that time, does that count? That the, the, can they tell that people are watching it because, or is my viewership not doing anything whatsoever? Yeah, um, you know, it, it's the ratings are a little different how they work now versus in years past where it was only Nielsen ratings that all, all they cared yeah. about, and they do keep track of all of that stuff. There is a lot of return data that they get. How they figure those numbers is, you know. That's not my area of expertise, but I know they do take into account all of that when they're doing this. So, uh, yes, yeah, so your viewership counts. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you. I usually say watching BattleBots with Helen, so. I'll have to start watching it on my Facebook. cable provider when it airs or whatever. That way it counts more than Hulu. I don't know if it would even count more nowadays because – it's so commonplace to use those other services. It probably right. counts just as much. I don't know. You know, it's funny because, like, Community was, like, the most watched show on Hulu, mm -hmm. like, ever as it was airing. And they canceled it anyway because its TV ratings weren't good. Uh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's... I, I know that the, that the Hulu numbers matter and that ABC wants to keep Hulu happy. I know that they care. How much they factor it into their decisions, though, I, I don't know. But I, I, I know that the Hulu numbers do matter a lot to them, that they are concerned about that. So, How, how much do they involve you, you as in all of the contestants, as far as the actual TV show and how it's doing? Do, do, they, do they let you know 
ratings are good, ratings are bad, that kind of stuff, or do you have to go out and find that on your own? Um, you know, there is a fair amount of communication that comes back, although most of your builders are at least as passionate as I am. Right. So, so the reality is that you've got, you know, a couple of hundred people on the various teams that showed up there who do nothing other than scour the internet for little bits of right. data and whatnot. And so a lot of times those details of ratings and how the show's doing and all this other stuff, we're telling them. They, 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 they haven't even heard it yet, and we've already found the details <laughs> and started shooting them all to them. So I, BattleBots is really good about communicating back to us, but it's just a numbers game at this point. You know, there's you know a few guys pe working at BattleBots, and there's all the rest of us out here that are you know, foaming at the mouth fanatics for this. Yeah. And so a lot of times we find out all the details long before BattleBots officially knows anything. Very cool. I was just thinking, um, like, my experience primarily is you and Team Witch Doctor and um, now I've talked off and on a little bit with Farouk through Facebook and stuff, but it seems like the BattleBots community in general is just a lot more hands-on with their fans and interactive and I just think that's really cool that like you you and Stinger mm -hmm. um, go to Buffalo Wild Wings for viewing parties uh, uh, almost every week I'll be there tomorrow night which is <laughs> awesome. very cool that's and awesome I've, yeah. I've seen Team Witch Doctor doing similar things in Orlando and um, with Hypershock yeah, yeah they've been Hypershock do it yeah so I mean that's just really cool that you guys connect with the fans and everything yeah, I, I mean, I think we all try to. I think we all try to include them. I think all of us are approachable as far as contacting us. You know, we get all kinds of contact through Facebook and email and whatnot. And all of them that I know are usually pretty open about those sort of things. Um, there's also people that might, might want to be a little more involved than you might want them to. So, like, I got somebody <laughs> would email and say, I want to come by your house and show your robot to my kid. And it's like, what? Well, I, I moved on five acres in the country for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> to come to my house. So it's a lot easier for those type of things to go, you know what? We're going to be at Buffalo Wild Wings on Thursday. Right. Bring your kid on by. I'll be there with the robot. Matt will be there with his robot. And you can check us out there. Yeah. <laughs> and please, stranger, stay away from my children. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, I get it that fans are enthused. I, I get it. I really do understand it. And I I love the contact from all of them. I really do. Is your but recognition yeah, getting... Somebody I don't know just showing up at my house. Is, no, I think that's probably... Doing a little <laughs> that's a little weird, yeah. Are you, are you starting to get recognized out in public more and more as the season goes on now? It, it, it happens. Not not so much now because they haven't shown me that much this oh, year. Oh, that's true, it, yeah. So, but it, it it's kind of funny... I've had some pretty interesting interactions. Um, I, I remember uh, running into one lady, and she looked at me, had that kind of funny look on her eye, right? And <laughs> she goes, do, do I know you? And, I, and I'm going, no. And I, and I already know where this is going, right? But I'm, I'm just going to enjoy it and play it out. So she goes, I, no, I, I don't think so. She goes, well, did you work at so-and-so? And I go, no, no. And she goes, I know I know you. And so I finally let her off the hook. And I said, well, did you watch BattleBots? And she's like, <laughs> and she's smiling from ear to ear, and she goes, we didn't like you. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I mean, it, it was the way the, 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 the whole villain of the show thing got portrayed and whatnot. She was very happy and nice to meet me, and it wasn't, it wasn't a bad thing, but it was just so funny. Her honest reaction at meeting me was to be so happy to tell me that they didn't like me on the show last time. That's great. And she's probably going to tell that story for the rest of her life. Yeah. Prob well, I, I probably will, too. It was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we probably will That's now. <laughs> That's really cool. That I remember awesome. meeting Gary Busey when I was about 12 <laughs> years old. And my friend that was with me at the time walked up to him. We were in a video rental store in a town that had about three thousand people in it. Florence. And it, yeah, and they were <laughs> they were there to film and crew. Right. And they were there to film a movie. We ran into him in a video rental store renting movies of all things. And, in the uh, back room? My friend, yeah. <laughs> and my friend, uh, you know, another 12-year-old walks right up to him and goes, Hey, aren't you the guy that got your ass kicked at the end of Lethal Weapon? And he turned around to us as calm as could be, and he's like, Oh, no, no, no. 
Uh, they portrayed it long. I did the ass kicking. And he turned around and walked out. That was the end of the conversation. <laughs> What's funny is he probably was serious. Knowing Gary Busey, yeah. like, now, yeah. I may have thought he won that. Yeah. Knowing, knowing what I know now, I was probably... You know, glad to be alive after that encounter. Yeah. But <laughs> so it, it just kind of along the same lines. You definitely remember stuff like that because that was years and years ago, and then one of my first experiences with a you know famous person and totally right, yeah. weirdness. But yeah, That's great. Well, I think we should let Ray get back to work. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, as always, we're I we're I don't even know why we're honored with your presence. This is, yeah, yeah this is so awesome for us. We we love the show. I. I was at my parents' house last weekend, and they were all watching something on TV, and I had my little tablet out, and I'm watching BattleBots, and I'm going, ooh, and, like, making reactions. They're like, what is he doing? I'm like, I'm watching BattleBots. They're like, nerd. <laughs> but, like, this is, this is great for us. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. We'll continue to tune in. I hope to see you battle off against uh, Minotaur. Yeah. I think that would be kind of It'd a neat battle, so... I know you can't say too much, but uh... I, I I wish I could because I got a lot of stuff I'd love to say, but I can't. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Match... I'll tell you what. Yeah, After the... they air the episode when you win, <laughs> if you can call back in. We'll have that conversation. If you guys want to talk to me again after it's all said and done, I don't care. This is fun. I have a good awesome. time with this. So yeah, uh, just <laughs> watch the show tomorrow night. I, I face off against Brutus, um, Tough Machine. It's uh, the type that could possibly beat me. It's built very similar to Witch Doctor in that regard. So it, it ends up being a pretty good match. Uh, most of the matches tomorrow night are they're they're pretty outstanding. They're all well, most they're of all the matches good. Matches this season have been just yeah. amazing. Oh yeah, they've been leagues ahead of the last season, I think. So I, yeah, I, I think overall the fight quality's been pretty good. Everything they portrayed and you know, having more robots meant that they sort of highlighted more of the matches or some of them that they just didn't show. A, a bigger right. number this time. So they had more really good ones to, to portray, and everything that plays out from here to the end of the season, they're all really good matches. And, and the cool part is I was so busy at the event, I know who won all the matches. I didn't get to watch any of them. Oh. I'm enjoying watching the show as much as everybody else is because I finally get to see the matches, so it's really That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. I figured it would have all been edited, and you guys would have seen the whole thing by now. I didn't yeah. Yeah, no, they, not really. They, 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 they don't show us a whole lot of what they're doing afterwards. I, I'm sure that the, the guys that run BattleBots have seen everything that the production company has done, but, you know, we're, we're way down at the bottom of the total. We, we, we get to see it when you guys get to see it. Yeah, you're just the gladiators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know. Yeah, it's pretty much. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Ray. Uh, we yeah, really appreciate you. it. We, we truly are honored, and, and uh, we can't wait to speak to you next time. Hopefully we can talk to you kind of after we know more about the season, but uh, we, we wanted to talk to you early in the season and see how it was going. And Sounds really good to me. Awesome. Thank you so much, and uh, I guess we'll end the, end the recording here, and we'll see you guys next yeah. time. Thanks again, Ray. Sounds good. Talk to you guys later.